All right, so today's psychology slash strategic communication tip for the day. People will constantly try to put you in a box, right? Or something you do in a box. Now, somebody might say, we'll use a baseline example. Oh, this is expensive, or I don't like this. Or maybe they're talking about something else entirely. Like, I don't like the way so-and-so does blank. One of the most impactful questions you can ask after that is compared to what? And it's the contrast principle. Now, Robert Cialdini and other social science researchers get credit for this, but I'm gonna teach you how we applied it today and how also it applies to a lot of domains. So whether you're coaching athletes, coaching executives, running a business, talking to a friend, whatever. So let me give you a base example. Had a buddy reach out to me and say, hey, how do you like blank? Because we had bought this new piece of equipment for the garage gym. And I said, I like it, you know? And he said, well, how much does it cost? And I gave him the cost and he goes, Jesus, that's expensive. And I said, well, you know, what's your frame of reference there compared to what? And so he laid out what he was comparing it to and it was a non-linear comparison, right? What he compared it to, if he really looked at it, was gonna cost twice as much where this one thing, and I'm not gonna give free shout outs, did all those pieces. And he said, you know, I never thought about that. I never thought what it would cost to get the barbell and the clips and the weight and the shipping and all those things. So you're right, that wasn't as expensive as I thought. I'll give you another example of when I was uh, working with a group of athletes and we were teaching deceleration. And for those of you maybe outside of the field or, or new to it, you know, deceleration is really hard to teach. It's a lot harder to teach uh, than just acceleration. Now, there's gonna be people that vary on that, but the point is, is that athletes are used to doing speed drills, acceleration drills. They're not used to being taught how to stop, how to decelerate. And that can increase soreness because, you know, the quadriceps and lower body musculature in general is gonna absorb a lot more load. I mean, it's just basic physics. You get a 200 pound person running at X amount of speed, and then they've gotta drop their center of gravity and absorb all that load. You're gonna feel increase stiffness and soreness the next day. And that's not to say you're not going to have residual soreness or anything like that from speed and acceleration as well. It's just a different. They're not, there's no sexy Instagram drills of deceleration. We'll put it at that, right? A lot of people just want to show somebody running a faster 40 or doing cone drills and all this shit, but to actually stop, decelerate and do these things takes a lot of technical emphasis and time. So an athlete was like, man, this is hard. I don't like doing this. And I said, well, compared to what? And of course it was speed drills. And he had a valid point, right? Perception's reality. And I just had to remind him like, listen, I, I know that it's not fun or sexy, but this is the stuff that keeps you or reduces the risk of getting hurt. People generally don't get hurt just sprinting or jumping. They get hurt cutting, landing, and trying to decel. And again, don't be that person on the internet that's like, that's not true. People pull hamstrings all the time. Sure, but by and large, that can be because of technique, decrease eccentric strength, whatever. This isn't a post about that. You guys get what I'm saying. People make comparisons that are nonlinear. So now the, the example from today, right? We were meeting with a sponsor and they said, well, you know, if we sponsor your podcast, this is what we'd expect in terms of conversions. And this is what we see with somebody else. So I stopped right then and said, well, who are you comparing us to? And uh, God bless it. They're comparing us to like Joe Rogan, Tim Ferriss, people that have been podcasting since like 2011, 2012. And while our podcast is growing, right, we have 2 million downloads since 2019, we're not Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss. So I just say, stop. Let's just talk about something for a minute. Nobody can promise you conversions, one. You can go to Pinnacle Bank Arena and it doesn't guarantee that Pinnacle Bank is gonna get more customers. I can see a commercial for crypto.com. It doesn't guarantee that everybody is gonna go to crypto.com and invest. They might get traffic, they may not buy. You can see a Super Bowl commercial for Pepsi, but Pepsi cannot guarantee, nor can it track how many people went to the store right then and bought Pepsi. I go, so you're comparing us to somebody else that's been around a little bit longer. Also, they weren't letting me know what the deal was they had with them, what the offer was, right? Because let's say I was around as long as Joe Rogan and I have the same audience. Well, maybe they have a more attractive offer. Maybe they give Joe's audience 20% off and they give my audience 10% off. So they were trying to make it sound like, hey, we're gonna hold you to this metric that we wanna see sales or conversions, which is inaccurate. Consumer behavior is very complex. Whether something converts doesn't just depend on whether somebody hears about it. It's what was the code? What was the checkout process? What were they doing at the time? If somebody listens to a podcast, they're usually driving, they're usually walking the dog or they're multitasking. They're not listening to a podcast to get a sale, right? So what we tell people we can guarantee if you listen to our podcast and we hold true to this is we can guarantee that you're gonna get exposure and increase awareness to an evergreen and ever-growing audience. 
right? How many of you have heard about a company or something like that a certain amount of times and maybe it was 10 or 12 times until you bought something, right? Because you don't trust the company yet. You might not trust the person selling you or talking to you about the company. That's why we make a big point that like, hey, we need to like actually utilize the stuff that we're going to pump on our podcast. So slowing him down and saying, one, we never promise conversions and no company can do that. Two, you're comparing us to completely different people here. Three, you're comparing us to people that you've given completely different offers. Four, you've made the code that you're suggesting for us pretty complex. Whereas somebody else can do like Joe 20, right? If you want to do AOC 10 and uh, all these things or Brett 10, cool, we'll do that. And then also what's the placement of that? Because think guys, why do people do things, whether they buy products, whether they respond to something, it all comes down to the timing, the environment, the, what drives them, their subconscious influencers, the messaging in general, whether it resonates with them, as well as peer and other factors. So if you have a business and, or if you're coaching athletes or executives, you know, keep those things in mind. You can have the per perfect messaging. It may take a longer time, right? It takes time to build trust. You might have great messaging and uh, the time might be there, but it might be the wrong environment. That person might be distracted. There are a lot of factors that contribute to buy-in. So when you're making deals, when you're pitching something, utilize that contrast principle to get more information compared to what? What are you comparing us to? That way I can better understand your line of thinking. Then I can better explain it. When I better explain it, then we have better mutual agreement. When we have better mutual agreement, we have better interactions. We have more engagement, more effort, more buy-in, better results. These things happen over the long term and they're more complex than you think. For more on this, check out artofcoaching.com. We have tons of courses and resources that talk about behavioral principles, communication strategies, and these things will impact every aspect of your life because everything we do is communication. Whether you do that wisely or well will dramatically make a difference in your personal and professional life. Hope it helped.